Hello, this is Mary Kovach from Erie BOCES, Winnerick, and uh, welcome to Introduction to Microsoft Sway. Um, so this course um, deals with Microsoft Sway, which comes uh, within your Office 365 if you have those accounts through school. Otherwise, what you can do is you can sign up uh, for Sway for free at sway.com and create your own personal Microsoft account. So to get started, what I'm going to do is share my screen. And today's presentation um, will be in Microsoft Sway since this is a webinar about Sway. OK. So from the online uh, course platform, you're already into the video. I also have a link to a Sway that I created, uh, just very brief. It says introduction and real-time questions. So now if I click on here, it's going to bring me to where I can edit my Sway. But for you, when you click on it, we'll be in this play mode. Okay, so what is Sway? Um, again, Microsoft has a PowerPoint. Um, you've probably seen some other um, presentation tools. So what exactly is Microsoft Sway? So probably the best way uh, to tell you is to show you some examples and go over some of the features. OK, so this is an example of a Sway, quote unquote, um, seventh grade student for environmental studies. So you can see that it starts out as sort of a report about the red panda. Uh, what's kind of nice is um, students can actually bring in just a Word document that may have separate paragraphs um, or separate headings. And you can bring it in um, from your Office 365 or upload it from your computer. And it will easily transform it into a presentation. And you can easily also bring in images from the web. OK, so it's comparing um, this uh, unique uh, species to some other unique species like aardvark and manatee saying they do not even come close to the red panda when it comes to cuteness. And I would agree, look at that guy. So um, very easily, just by having um, some headings in your Microsoft Word document that you would bring in, it will then give you suggested pictures um, or videos or other content to bring in from the web. So uh, in Microsoft Sway, this is a completely online presentation tool. So the presentations will live online. Um, you'll present them from online. And you can view them from any device. OK, so here's just some more pictures of our red panda and his habitat. OK, here's a Martin. And so we'll look at some other examples of ways that you can organize your content. So very easily, um, Sway kind of does the design for you, does the uh, presentation design. You can change it very quickly. Example of a type of group uh, for images. So you can see I can flip through images, uh, sort of like a stack of photographs or view it bigger and then view the images side to side. Okay, so that's an example of a Sway. And of course, um, any good presentation will have its uh, sources listed as well. So uh, some of the benefits of using Microsoft Sway. Um, as I mentioned, you can easily drop in um, photos or videos or other multimedia. So for example, you can um, embed YouTube videos um, you can embed tweets, uh, content from Wikipedia. Uh, again, bring things in right from your OneDrive if you use uh, Microsoft OneDrive. Bring in Facebook posts. Um, really, any kind of web content that would be applicable to your presentation. OK, and as I mentioned, um, when you're looking at the design, once you've pulled in uh, your content um, for your Sway presentation, You'll go into the design and click on Remix, and then it will easily sort of transform uh, the content into a new design. OK, and again, um, 
in the module, I have linked uh, the links for the apps for both Microsoft um, devices and for iPads and iPhones. So again, there is an app for it, but even if you don't have the Sway app, if you give somebody the link to your presentation, it's uh, responsive depending on the size of your device. Um, so it's gonna look good, um, although unique, whether you're working on a phone, um, viewing it, whether you're working on an iPad or a computer. Okay, and I'll just show you uh, briefly before I get into showing you how to set up this way, how to start using some of these features. Look at some of these elements. Okay, so again, you have the option of different layouts just for pictures and videos. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, there's one that's called stack where it looks like you're kind of flipping over a stack of photographs. Ones where you can put all the photos together in a grid, um, a slideshow, and some other ones um, that we will take a look at. Okay, as I mentioned, um, this is what that stack group would look like. We saw an example of that. Also, what's nice is um, if you have the app and you sign into your Microsoft account through the app, um, you can edit your sways right on your device. So I tried this before on my iPhone. And what you can do is um, not only pull in pictures that you already have, um, but you can take pictures right on the fly. Let's say, um, let's say students are on a field trip or you're with them on a field trip and you wanna put together a presentation, you can quickly um, click and uh, take a photo and then add that right into your Sway for a presentation. some more Sway examples to show some of the other features that you can bring in. So again, if all you want to do is bring in, let's say a Word document and kind of spice it up, that's fine. But you can also embed things um, such as a map. So here's um, a map of Lachlan, how to get there. Hoping to go there in about a month or so. Okay, so just some of the other features that you can embed. Again, this is an example of grouping. So whenever you want content um, to be displayed together, you wanna make sure you put it in a group. Um, so we'll go over how you would do that. Because again, um, unless you tell uh, Sway, it's gonna assume that um, they can put the content in um, any design that um, they might see fit that you can then remix, but you can certainly choose to group content together. Okay, so this one is just inviting teachers um, to join uh, their workshops at LACMA. And I uh, wonder if I could attend a workshop there. It certainly would be a nice thing. So you can embed, um, as you see, um, some of your own pictures. So you see this is actually someone's storyboard that they scanned in and put into the presentation. So I won't go through the whole thing of this. I'll just show you a couple of other examples. Um, so this one is making pasta, it's a Sway example. Um, so let's say you wanna have students show how to do something. Um, so this particular example walks through the steps of turning eggs and flour into pasta. This is just kind of a sample one. Um, so another kind of group you can have is a comparison, where you see I'm kind of clicking and dragging, so I'm comparing two images. So again, it could be um, comparing a certain part of the earth, different times of the year, but here we have ingredients and final product. But this one actually has some embedded videos. So you can have students, let's say, take a video, or take pictures and then embed them into the Sway. So I won't watch all the videos, but again, if students could upload them to uh, YouTube or upload them to um, Microsoft Stream, some other location, then they can embed those into a presentation as well. So you wouldn't have to bring in the flour and the eggs into class and make a big mess. Uh, and they can still do this sort of expository writing in a presentation. 
Okay, and just to show you, uh, this is one of the test examples, that it doesn't necessarily have to go from side to side. Um, I like the term sway because it's kind of like you're scrolling through a presentation. Um, the two main ones are where you're swaying. This one is up and down. So it really ends up looking more like a modern web page. You can see here it has some different images that are brought in, which I can click on to make bigger. Let's click on the X here, get back. So any of the pictures I can certainly click on to see full screen if I want to. And again, here's my little stack here of images. So just to show you, there are other ways that you can have your content um, come in and display for your users. Uh, there are also ways you can make it autoplay as well, which we will talk about that when we get into uh, creating our sways. Okay, and this, I won't go through all of these, um, but in case you wanted to get into some of the more advanced things, if you have questions um, of how to do things, there is a tips and tricks for Sway um, in Microsoft Sway as well. Okay, and again, for me, it shows up where I can edit, but if you wanted to click on play, it can walk you through a number of those options as well. Now, some of the things might look a little bit different now because they've updated Microsoft Sway. Still, the concepts that they have in here um, are great ones. If you kind of wanted to go to the next level, once you get um, your feet wet with Microsoft Sway. Okay, that's just a presentation that I had uh, downloaded from the public Sways into my own. Now, also what I put in here was a Padlet. So this is an embedded... Um, activity right within Sway. So maybe some of you have heard of Padlet before. And um, if you go back to that link from the module, here is where, um, if you are with us live, um, you can ask a question by clicking on the uh, plus in the pink circle in the lower right corner here. Um, then it's going to ask, um, bring up your own text box where you can ask a question. Um, otherwise, um, if you have questions um, after today, so if if you're watching the recording of this, you can ask questions through the discussion forum in here as well. So from the webinar module, you'll see a link that says questions about Microsoft Sway. Um, so again, if you're watching the recording, you can click where it says start a new thread and ask your question that way. Okay. So what I'll show now is how you can get into Microsoft Sway. Uh, a couple of different ways. So if you do have an Office 365 account through your school, otherwise, you can sign in and then you'll see Sway as one of your apps. So either right on your homepage or if you click on your app launcher in the upper left, then you should see it in here as well. If you can't find it, um, you can always go to all, and then your apps, you can either search or scroll down through here. So probably if you can't find it um, from your home under your apps, you can go to all, and then just do a search for Sway. Uh, so the other way, uh, and I'm just going to go to a guest window here. If we go to Sway.com, you can get to it as well. So again, if you don't have an Office 365 account, what you would have to do is go to sway.com and click get started. And then if you don't have a Microsoft account through anything else, um, so if you have an Xbox, um, other Windows devices, you probably already have a Microsoft account. If you have Windows 10, or like I said, Xbox, um, any of those um, newer Microsoft devices, if you don't have a Microsoft account, you can click where it says create one. And then enter your email address and create a password for yourself. 
Um, so that's for those who may not have an Office 365 account through their school. But since I do, that's how I'm going to get into Sway. So once I log into my Office 365 and Sway, okay. And now there are a couple of ways that you can start to uh, work on a presentation. You can either create new, you can start from a topic. So again, you could type in a topic, um, it'll bring up some Wikipedia content. Um, again, Wikipedia content, take with a grain of salt, uh, make sure it has references. Uh, the other way is you can start from a document. So again, if you had um, a Word document on your computer, you could upload it from here. But the first way I'll show is if you click on create new. So I'm going to start a new sway from scratch here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is give it a title. So think about what my topic is. And since the Winter Olympics are coming up in here, what I'm going to do is type in the Olympics. Okay, so this is going to be my title. And now I'm going to click where it says background to create a background picture. Okay, so once I click here, now what I can do is use one of their suggested searches to find content. I can type in a search term, or I can go to suggested, and I can ch choose from any of these different categories. Um, so you'll see that I can search my OneDrive for content. So again, it's bringing in anything from my OneDrive folders. Um, Flickr, Bing Images, uh, Picket. I can go right to YouTube to find a video. Or I can upload something from my device here. Okay. And that's because right now I'm in, um, over here on the right, uh, the insert area. From uh, one of uh, the two tabs that you're mainly going to be working in. Um, so the tab where you would add content, right under the word sway, you want to make sure that this storyline uh, tab is selected. And that will then allow you to add content. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a new background in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my suggested and search for the Olympics. Okay, so then what it's going to do is search for images. Again, images that you can um, use for educational purposes. Um, in most cases, it's um, as long as you attribute and uh, you're not getting financial gain from it. So then I have content I can just click and drag in. So for example, if I want to show, this is my background, the Olympic rings, I can drag that in. And now I have my background so far. Okay, so um, at any point, what I can do is in the upper right, click the play button and see how my presentation looks so far. So again, I didn't apply any specific um, designs. It's picking one for me uh, that then uh, we'll look at later ways that you can remix and you can tweak those designs as well. Okay, so now when I'm in the play mode, if I had more content, I could scroll from side to side using the arrows in this lower right corner. But I wanna add some more content. So I'm going to go back and click on my pencil at the top. Okay, so some other ways that you can add in content. Again, I can either go from my insert button right here on the right, and I can choose any of these. So let's say I wanted to upload something from my device. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to bring in some info from a PowerPoint about the ancient Olympics. I'm gonna upload this PowerPoint that I have saved on my computer and click open. And then it's going to format that PowerPoint uh, to go into this way. Okay, so you can see that what it did was uh, it created an automatic group 
um, with this content together. So I have my heading, um, text and image cards that came in. So it took that PowerPoint and it converted that into sort of a sway format. Okay. Okay. So let's say that I wanted to add something in between these two things. So maybe I want to say, um, before we talk about the 2018 Olympics, let's talk about how it all got started. So I'm going to click on a piece of my content here and then click on the plus underneath it. Okay, and this is how then you can insert content right underneath um, a particular card. Um, so when you're working in Microsoft Sway, you have uh, what are called cards, and these are the different pieces of content that you bring in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just put uh, some text in. So I'm gonna insert what's called a text card. Okay, just type in before we can talk about the 2018 Olympics. Let's talk about how it all got started. Okay, now one thing you will not see in Sway, you will not see a save button. So as with a lot of things that are web-based, um, it will save automatically because again, it's just um, an online presentation tool. There's not anything that you can really download, it's something where you're working online on your device. Okay, so now again, I'm gonna click play. Okay, and it's gonna refresh. And now I'm going to either scroll from side to side or I can use the arrows. Before we can talk about the 2018 Olympics, let's talk about how it all got started. And now I can kind of scroll through and I can see all of my content. Okay, but now let's say that in here, some of these things I actually wanted to have them come in together. Because again, maybe in my PowerPoint, there's a picture that went with certain text here. You have the option to um, group content together. So a couple of ways you can do that. Um, so I'm going to click this text card. I can drag it on top of something else, and then you'll see I kind of see that word group. Once I see it, as I'm kind of dragging that over, I can let go, and it's going to group those two things together. And then once I do, it's going to suggest um, some different group types. So if I wanted it to be a grid, I could do that. Um, the stack, again, is kind of like the cards that you flip over. Otherwise, it's going to go with uh, the automatic. OK, so now when I click Play here, you can see that now those things, uh, when I go back, they will show up together. OK, so now you'll see that I have my text um, coming in with the picture itself. And then I could do the same thing, um, bring my other image cards into that group as well. Or I could take this and make it its own group. So you can have groups within groups as well. Okay, so then if I wanted um, this to be the stack type, I could click the group type from here as well to get this back out. So if I didn't have that side bar on the right, I could click group type, or I could click to ungroup. Um, at any point, if there is um, content that you decide uh, you don't want anymore, you can always um, click on it, and then you'll see in the upper right here the trash can. Okay, so some other kinds of content you can put in, let's say those text blocks, you can emphasize text, okay? I can accent it, um, use bullets for numbers. You cannot really change the font here. So if you wanted to, let's say, change uh, the font, uh, the look and feel, 
um, any of those elements in your presentation, what you're going to do is click on next to the Storyline tab. Again, Storyline where you're adding content. You're going to click on the Design tab. Okay. And so up here now, I can click on the styles. And then I can see my different styles. So again, um, if I don't like this one, I can either click Remix, and it's going to give me a random one that maybe I will like better for my presentation. Okay, and this is also where I can choose how that content comes in. So again, I can choose vertical, where it scrolls up and down, where it looks more like a web page would, the way that you would navigate through a web page. Uh, the horizontal, which again is what we've been looking at, where it kind of sways, it scrolls horizontally, or you could have it where the content actually just comes in um, as a PowerPoint would going from slide to slide. I kind of like it swaying. I think it's something kind of fun and it flows. Okay, so again, if I don't like this, I can click on either Remix or I can choose a different style from my list of styles here. So if I want more of a black and white style, if I think that's cool, I can choose that. Okay, let's see. I like this sort of um, you know purple style with the... Uh, what looks like uh, kind of little dandelions on it. I like this, but I want to change the font. Here now I can click on customize and that's going to allow me to do some different font changes. Okay, so you don't have a million options, but you have a number of options here that you can choose from. Let's say I like this one here. Kind of stylized, looks maybe like it's um, sort of ancient. And here is where then you can choose if you want the animation to come in intensely, uh, more quickly, or if you want that um, subtly or somewhere in between. You can choose um, how that animation comes in. I think intense is kind of fun. And you can choose if you want the text size larger or smaller. Just a lot of times, if it is larger, it might just take more scrolling. Okay. I kind of like that purple. Maybe I'll try the orange in my uh, customize here. But now I'll close out. Okay. So now if I click play, I can see how that's changed. So again, this is all with a few clicks. I can choose to have that remixed. Okay, you can see my content in here. And again, I probably could group it a little bit better. But again, I have um, my PowerPoint presentation that I brought in, made into a sway, and now I can go back to edit and I can enhance that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Storyline and so let's see some other things I might want to bring in. So again, in any of these, I can either click on the plus underneath some of my content. Okay, so let's say I click on a new group here and then I can choose the kind of group. So let's say I want to do a comparison of something from the Olympics then to something, uh, an event from the Olympics now. Okay, so I'm going to click plus, click comparison. And again, now this is where then you're comparing two different images. Okay, so I'm going to click on add an image. Okay, so I'm going to choose that image card, which now I can search online. So I'm going to do one that's, let's say, ancient Olympics. Okay, so let's say this is kind of an ancient event of track and field. Okay, so I'm going to drag that in here. Drag that above. And then Olympics, I'll search for track 
and find maybe something that's similar. Okay, so now I could click and drag and add this image here. Okay, so now I have my comparison group. And I'll just scroll through here. So I can show you what that uh, comparison would look like. Okay, um, so probably I would group that a little bit differently, but here you can see it's sort of where I can go between two images. Okay, and click the pencil. Okay, so again, uh, the way that you can organize uh, content is, as is shown here, you can click and drag content on your screen. So again, I could take this content and I could click and I can drag that to any place I want to. So if something was out of place, I could always drag that and um, put it in a new area of my presentation. So let's say now I'm gonna move that one to the bottom here. Not that I wanted to. So let's say that accidentally I moved something that I didn't want to. What I could do is click undo. Okay. okay. So now again, if things were um, grouped together that necessarily you don't want grouped together, you always have the option to ungroup as well. So any of these things that are in a group, If I click on the group here, I can always choose to ungroup any of the content as well. Okay, so let's see uh, how this looks so far. I'm going to click play. Okay, so now if I wanted this to go automatically, let's say that it was a presentation that I had on a kiosk and I wasn't necessarily going to be able to advance it automatically. What I can do from uh, after I click play is I can click on the gear shift up here in the upper right, and I can start autoplay settings. So you can see I can choose the number of seconds that each um, card displays, or each group, I should say, if it's um, content grouped together. If I want to change the layout from here, I can. But now if I click start, what it's going to do is go automatically um, every five seconds. So again, if it's something where you wanted to just kind of run as a presentation, similar to what you might do in PowerPoint, let's say, you can set up that autoplay. If I want to stop autoplay, I can click stop or click back on my gear um, to adjust those settings. So if I needed to increase or decrease the number of seconds, I could do that from my gear. Uh, but now I'm going to click stop to get out of my autoplay and uh, back to edits. Okay, so let's see what some of the other types of content are that I can bring in. So again, I can either click on a plus underneath one of my cards or click on the insert button over here on the right. Click plus. So again, you can put in headings or text. And uh, within any text block, that's also where then you would put a link. So let's say that I wanted to link this text here. I'm just going to search for Winter Olympics um, to get a link. So let's say that I wanted to uh, link to this uh, Winter Olympics schedule. I could copy that. And let me come back to my sway highlight the text and click on this link button. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that in and click okay. And so now that becomes a live link that we can click on from here. And then it's gonna open up in a new tab with that link. So when I close out of that one tab, then I'm back at my presentation.
Okay, so I'm going to mouse. And you do have to kind of mouse over that upper right corner, and I'm going to click on the pencil. Okay, and that will bring me back to my area for editing. Okay, so some other types of content. Again, we mentioned um, bringing in the images, the stack. So that would be where you're bringing in uh, multiple images. I'm just going to click on image. And I could even just um, bring any of these um, Creative Commons images in here. And then it's going to create uh, that stack that we can kind of flip through. I can see, oops, there we go. Kind of flip through those pictures. Okay, so not sure why it keeps refreshing. Oops. Close out of that. Other types of content we could bring in. As you mentioned, we have text, uh, we have media. So we've been putting in images. You can bring in a video as well. So I'm just going to search for Olympics winter. OK. So I can bring in a video by dragging it into here. So again, I can put in text to go along with that video as much as I'd like or as little. So I could say these are the buildings of the winter Olympics. OK. And then um, to preview that video, I can go to play. Oops, I'm going to pass it. There we go. And then click play. So now I can either play it right from within my sway in the smaller frame or click on the full screen button in the lower right. OK. And so then um, from here, if I want to get back to the presentation, I can click my escape key or the exit full screen. That is now in the lower right there. And then I will get back to my presentation. Okay, so I'm going to click edit again, my pencil. And some other types of content that I can bring into here under media. Okay, I can bring an audio. Um, so if I had an audio file, I could do that, or I can record um, my own audio. And you will have to, um, in your browser, give permission. So you'll have to click allow or something similar. And I'm getting ready to record in three, two, one. Welcome to the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. And if I'm happy with it, Welcome to the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Okay, and if I like it, I can click Add to Sway. And uh, when you record the audio, it might take a second uh, to process that, but then it's something you'd be able to play from there. Now, if you choose one of the kind of scrolling or swaying um, layouts, and you put in, let's say, um, a song that you've recorded or that you have from somewhere else to use, of course. Um, it will actually um, then play through your presentation. But again, it has to be um, under the design, um, one of those uh, swinging views here. So if I click on my styles um, at the top here, it has to be the vertical or horizontal. Um, the slides, uh, the music would stop. So you would have to use one of these first two. If you put in, let's say, a, a lengthier um, piece of background music for your whole presentation. Welcome to the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Okay, and there's my preview. Okay, so click back on my storyline. I think there was just one other piece I really wanted to show you in here under the media, and that is the embed. So um, kind of like I did for this introduction, and this is a good time to get back to my questions, I suppose. Um, I embedded this Padlet, 
that's something that you can embed um, into your sway. So I'm gonna go over the different kinds of things that you can embed. Okay. So if I click on where it says audio clips and more, so pretty much anything that's embeddable from Microsoft, you could bring in um, SoundCloud. So SoundCloud is a place where you can um, find some Creative Commons music that you could put into your presentation. If I click on more right here, then uh, this also allows me to see what sites can be embedded. Okay, so this is all of our Microsoft content. And then it lists some other sites too. Um, so again, Flipgrid. If you use um, Flipgrid, um, sort of plugging, I guess, for classrooms. If you haven't seen that, it's a great tool. Um, any number of Google things you can embed. So Google Forms, Google Maps. Um, the maps, as you saw with that um, Los Angeles County uh, Museum of Art, you can um, embed uh, a map to someplace into your presentation. Um, so Padlet, this is the one that I chose. It's really kind of like a big um, virtual chalkboard, I guess, or um, brainstorming board. Um, so some other interesting ones, um, FET simulations. Um, so let's say you wanted to embed a, um, a physics simulation, um, another science simulation. You could do that. A number of other social media formats as well. So to do that, um, let me go to one of my pieces of content. So for example, Padlet. So how I can do that is if I go to padlet.com. And again, um, I've already created an account. If you haven't, um, there is an upgraded version of Padlet, but the basic version of Padlet is free. Okay. So now let's say that I wanted to embed one of these Padlets into my presentation. Not that these necessarily go along with the Olympics. I'll just click on my Simpsons one here, just to kind of show you. Here are their favorite Simpson moments. They've had some uh, Olympics things too. So medals, you know, they had um, triumphant gold, so, so silver and shameful. Um, that's just a, a Simpsons quote. I'm kind of a Simpsons fanatic. Um, but let's say that I wanted to embed this into my sway. Okay, I'm going to click on share at the top here. And for different sites, you're going to find the embed code in different spots. But usually you'll see a link that says share or embed. Okay, so for here, for example, I'll click share and then click embed. And then you'll usually see those two carrots too that sort of symbolize uh, the HTML coding. Um, so now I can either copy all of this by highlighting it and doing uh, command C. Uh, in this case, they actually give me a copy button. So I can copy that content. Okay, and then go back to my Sway, and I'm gonna paste that code into this embed card. So I'm just gonna do my um, Command or Control V, depending on what kind of computer you're using. And it's not gonna look like much from here. What you would have to do is actually click the play button to see what that would look like. And um, again, you may have to change the design uh, depending on the kind of content you have. So here I have my you know, Simpsons Padlet. So you can see here, it doesn't really show up um, too big on the screen. So that's something where that I may have to um, remix my presentation. But I would take a look at um, the list that's in there of the embeddable content. Um, also, from uh, the course module here, I do have a folder of Microsoft Sway resources and examples, and I did link that list um, right out from here as well. Um, so if you wanted to know what kinds of things you can embed into a Sway, then um, I do have that link in here as well. And that link says embed options for Sway. So that's gonna tell you the sites 
that um, you can currently embed and hopefully uh, more to come for that as well. Okay, so just I'm gonna show you one other way that you can uh, create a sway, but before I do that, um, what I wanna make sure I show you is how you can share your sway. Okay, so we've created our presentation. Uh, certainly you could show this to your students during class, have them show their own sways during class, but um, something else that you could do from here is when I click share, you're going to get a link. Okay. So again, um, if you're in an Office 365 account um, through your school, other organization, the default setting is share your sway with those in your organization with the link. If you share by default this link here, if you copy and paste that, let's say into an email to your um, colleagues or to students as well, because they also have would have accounts then through um, Office 365 in your domain. They would have to log in with their credentials to see that. If you wanted to open up, so let's say parents or others could view that. Let's say you wanted to put this link on your website. You can change that to anyone with a link. Okay. So again, I have the link that I can copy and paste into an email, um, get visual link. I can copy this as well. And I can paste this into an email message if I wanted to. Okay, also I have the embed code. So let's say that I wanted to embed this um, onto my web page. I can certainly do that as well. And it's gonna show right within the contents of my web page. Okay, so some other share options. You also have the ability to create a link um, and it would be a separate link for those you wanna share editing rights with. So again, you wanna make sure that you remember um, which link is which. Pick a link um, would be able to make changes to your Sway so you would be um, collaborative. And if I click view, anyone with this link would just be able to see it and play it. And again, you could share it through social media. Some other options you have, um, you can require a password to view or edit this way. So it could be something where you don't want parents necessarily to have to log in through your school domain, um, but maybe it's something you wanna post on a website and you only want it open to certain people. Um, so instead of having them log in, you could set it to anyone with the link and then just click on require a password and then you would choose a password. And again, if you wanted to only require a password for editors, that as well. So a number of different ways uh, that you can share. Okay, so now I'm just gonna click back on Sway at the top of my screen. Um, so, so far we've created from new and then uploaded documents, curated content, and um, sort of pulled that in. Um, also, just so you know, once you go to Sway, there's a tutorial section in the upper right corner as well. So it will take you out to uh, some YouTube videos, um, YouTube channel from Microsoft about making a Sway. Okay, but I digress. The other way um, that I've uh, started Sways before is you click start from a document. Okay, so let's say students have a written essay they've done. You can upload it here. So I'm gonna take a look at, um, let's see. Let's say this was the student's Olympics essay. Okay, so um, a title in here, and I know that it's a title um, because when I click on the text in my styles up here, you can see uh, title is um, highlighted. Okay. And I'm going to click where it says nationalism. And that's a subtitle. So if I'm uh, organizing content, um, by let's say highlighting it and then clicking on the style I want, that's going to help when I bring it into my sway. It's going to recognize that as a separate um, piece of content and group things together accordingly. Okay, 
So here's my essay. So it has my text, uh, my titles and my pictures. I'm going to click start from a document and then I am going to upload that Olympics essay by choosing it and clicking open. Okay, let's say just a moment. So it's going to take that content that was in a Word doc and put it in that Sway format. Okay, so again, it brings in my title as the title. And now if I want to, I can put in a background image. Um, so, and it's going to give me, based on the content that is in um, my Sway, give me some suggestions. But I'll put in my own search terms here. I'll just say Olympics Modern. Okay. Maybe now what I want to do is, let's see. Oh. I could bring in any of these, I suppose. I'll bring in the swimming one. I was a swimmer, so I'll bring in my swimming one here. Um, another thing, in an image, um, you can add what are called focus points. So sometimes, especially if it's a very large image, certain parts might be a little cut off or de-emphasized. Um, I can always click um, focus points for the image. Higher image is important. Or click on parts of the image that I want to make sure are displayed. Okay, so if you find that you go into your presentation um, and certain things just aren't um, showing that you want to from that picture, if they're getting kind of brushed over, you might want to go into uh, the focus points and say which are the most important parts of that picture to show. If the whole thing's important, you can keep it checked where it says the entire image is important that and you have a lot of text, you'll get that effect where um, at some point the text can sort of scroll over the picture. Okay, so now um, just from bringing in that Word document, adding in one picture, you can see this is now what my Word document looks like. Okay, and obviously I can tweak it from here, but I think that's pretty good with just, you know, bringing in, and here's my text coming over my picture. Again, because the whole thing is important. So I think that's pretty good, just having a Word document and bringing it into a presentation. So again, if you want students to um, find a new way to um, present based on essays they've written, um, topics they've researched, um, Sway is kind of a nice, easy way for them to make uh, a pretty quick, interesting presentation where then um, they can start content first and then add in sort of those points of interest and those um, bells and whistles. Um, so again, let me get back to the online platform to show you um, some of the differences um, for this webinar and how you can get your certificate. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our platform. Okay, so again, introduction to Microsoft Sway. Um, if you haven't, make sure that you register using this registration link. Um, if you're watching this, you've already found the Microsoft Sway uh, webinar video. Again, this is um, the introduction presentation that we looked at this one. Um, again, um, the Padlet's in here, but if you wanted to ask questions um, after the fact, so if you're not viewing it live, if you're viewing the recording, the best place to go, I would say, is this questions about Microsoft Sway because I get a notification whenever someone posts um, to that topic, okay? Also, there are a couple of things here that probably um, may not be showing up for you. Um, so once you actually view the video, which you've done already, a link here that says Microsoft Sway secret code. Okay, so with this um, particular webinar, what I did was I created two separate quizzes right in the platform. So, you would first have to take this secret code quiz, okay? And I'm just gonna go into preview mode here so you can see what you would have to do, okay? So you would have to click on start quiz, okay? Click okay. Okay, and then this one is actually just 
um, the one response, we are going to have to add in the secret code, which is swaying cards, kind of like playing cards. Um, let me sort of zoom in there a little bit. Okay. So the secret code there for this one will be swaying cards. So think about playing cards, but like Microsoft Sway. So it's swaying cards. Okay, so we'll just zoom back out here. Um, so once you put in your response, you can click on go to submit quiz. And then you do have to submit quiz before you will actually see your grade. Um, and then obviously this is just the one question. So once you get 100 on that, um, it will unlock another piece of content on here, which is the Microsoft Sway quiz. Um, so that will work much the same way. Um, and I'll go into my preview mode here. Um, again, certain things you won't see because I have editing rights for the platform. Okay, so again, you would start the quiz, click OK. And then you would answer the questions. And you can always save your progress as you go or just choose um, your answer. They're um, just the five multiple choice questions. You need to get four or five correct, so an 80% or better. Um, so once you've submitted your answers, again, click on Go to Submit Quiz, and then also click Submit Quiz. And of course, I didn't choose anything. So it's going to tell you if you have unanswered questions. But once you um, click that blue Submit Quiz button, make sure you do that. As long as you got 80% um, or 100%, and again, you can take the quiz multiple times if you want to. Um, once you get a, six, um, a satisfactory grade on that, you should be able to click on um, next to where it says Help Videos and PD Webinars, click News. And then from here, you should have your certificate. So again, uh, once you successfully complete the quiz, this will pop up. So it won't pop up until you actually complete the quiz, okay? And so then from here, what you can do is you can click on the title or click on view. And then you could either print it out. So if I did a file print, um, then I can print out my certificate. Or instead of printing it, I could choose to, for example, save it as PDF and then upload it um, to where you need to. Um, so you can um, do either of those options. Print it out, save it to PDF. Um, if you are working in Google, save it to your Google Drive. Um, save it to your OneNote if you're working in uh, Microsoft Edge. So then you have a number of options where then you can save your certificate. Okay. And again, you don't necessarily need that second page, um, so you could just choose you know, page one if you wanted to, and then you would have your certificate. So I thought I would try it a little bit differently um, for some of the Microsoft uh, courses here in 2018 and um, see how that works out for the future. So I hope you like uh, Microsoft Sway. Hope you see it as something useful where students uh, perhaps, um, or even you, you could focus on um, content, and then you can bring in um, some of those other elements. Or again, just creating presentations that are going to be more engaging, um, more filled with um, multimedia. So if you have any questions, as always, um, you can ask me either by starting a new thread in uh, the uh, discussion area within the module, or you can always uh, send me an email as well, mkovach at e1b.org. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.